can't believe I spent 30 minutes trying to figure out if I should say hey or hello. <sighs> Real quick, before I actually get into the meat of the video, uh, just a quick introduction since this is my first video. Welcome to Red Noise. This is social commentary coming from the conservative viewpoint. I'm probably like a lot of you out there that get really frustrated when you turn on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you have, and see all the left-wing nonsense that goes on all the time. And probably a lot like you out there, there's just nowhere to vent. And we've all seen the masses of anti-SJW, anti-feminist, anti-Black Lives Matter, whatever, videos that are actually out there. So there's, I mean, there's a healthy amount on YouTube, at least from my perspective. So my approach is going to be trying to reach out to people who have left-wing ideals and seeing if I can create a conversation. And that doesn't necessarily put me in the realm of debating. Not that I'm above debating, because I will debate all day long. Um, but more than anything, I feel like debating has the opposite effect of what I'm trying to do, which is try to start the conversation that starts to bridge the gap between these between polarizing viewpoints. And with that out of the way, let's uh, kind of roll into the actual meat of the video. Since I wasn't able to get a hold of anyone yet to actually bring on and just have on as a guest, I'm just I'm gonna cover something that I've. That I've seen a pattern of and that pattern is a lack of consistency when it comes to the group as a whole so I feel like with conservatives libertarians anti-SDOWs anti-feminists they kind of follow along a certain set of ideals that don't oppose each other a lot of the time so you won't see like two opposing viewpoints within the same group or within that. One of those inconsistencies is overgeneralization. So it spans everything, everywhere, as even as small as everyone has a racial bias, all the way up to everyone is racist, everyone is sexist, and then you'll see somewhere in the middle, all white people are racist, all men are sexist. And you have this varying degrees of everyone is something and it's usually, I mean, to be honest, it's usually geared towards white men, uh, cisgender, whatever you say it. And a lot of the times, if you see that spun around and you overgeneralize in the other direction, I mean, this is one of the first arguments that you kind of see coming into my point of view is, well, since you're doing it, if I said that about uh, black people, if I said it about transgender people, if I said it about gay people, Mexicans, anyone, I would be deemed this prejudice. And while a lot of the time, when it comes the other way around, there's no prejudice attached to it. So you'll see this argument of overgeneralization towards this group of people is okay, but overgeneralization of this type of people is not okay. This next point is really murky and it's hard to explain so please bear with me. The reason it's so hard to explain is because you have little different opinions all over the place and it's really hard to pin down and dissect um, but it comes to transgender people and uh, so the idea is that gender so, and I'm not even, I'm not even referring to biology right now. So just completely forget about biology. Uh, gender is a social construct. And that's something I can agree with. Um, uh, guys wear pants that I can totally agree with. That's a social construct. Um, it could have just as been easily once upon a time somebody said, uh, I think it's more manly for guys to wear dresses. And that's what, what went on. So I think gender can most definitely be a social construct. People have made the argument that uh, gender is tied to biology for different reasons, which is fine, but I'm not going to go into that too much. I just want to focus on the social construct part. So from my experience and what I've seen is that a lot of transgendered people, they believe in the fact or the idea that gender is a social construct and there's nothing wrong with that 
but what I also see is that they also say they feel like a girl or a boy and in order to identify with this gender they have to they have to grow hair cut hair do whatever you have to do to fit into those social constraints and then I then I see that and I go why even bother with social constraints if you feel a certain way I, I and that's kind of where it, it gets murky for me cuz me personally I don't identify as a male boy man whatever I just am it's I don't identify as wanting to wear pants or um, wanting to work out or play video games or do things that men typically do I just do those things and those are part those are a part of who I am it's not that I'm a boy and me being a boy has no I don't relate to that identity uh, I mean I could if I was into wearing dresses and painting my fingernails that's what I would do it, it I wouldn't me personally I wouldn't feel like I'd have to become make a spectacle of it go I'm I'm a girl the, it, because I like to wear dresses I have to be a girl I feel like if something's a social construct you and that you feel like gender is a social construct you shouldn't have to be transgender you just do whatever you want to do so if you're a boy and you like wearing dresses and, and this is overly simplifying it but for the sake of argument if you're a boy and you like wearing dresses and you agree that wearing dresses dresses are for girls is a social construct so why don't just wear dresses and forget the whole gender part why do you have to be transgender if you're just playing into that same social construct so i mean you're either saying you don't like the social construct but you do but then there's inconsistency within that argument as well so that's just a really murky area and it doesn't make sense to me because i don't identify as a boy or a male i just am and this is coming from a headline i just read um so you have transgender people so people who go with social constructs or whatever and so these are and some of these people believe that race is a social construct but they will say you cannot be transracial or you'll have the you'll have those two groups of people people who say race is a social construct and then maybe another group of people on the same aisle who say you can you can't be transracial those people are on the side and their viewpoints are conflicting and this last thing is probably one of the most important things um, it comes down to definitions so one of the the two probably most talked about definitions that I've seen that I've been in this sphere is racism and feminism so you're on one side of the aisle you say racism is against um, people you do not like because of your skin color so the typical dictionary definition of racism and then the sociological uh, definition of racism which says that you have to have power and you have to be able to enact racism over somebody so you can't be racist without power um, which makes sense it's just a different definition and then there's feminism there's so you'll have one side of the aisle that says feminism are people who hate men who are always trying to bring men down or trying to pull themselves above men and then you'll have the other side of the aisle that say that feminism is about equality and use the dictionary definition of feminism um and all of these definitions are right and but each side um tends to not to not use the other definition uh granted uh, and this and this is my side um racism is the dictionary definition um and then when they talk about feminism they're saying what they're what they're seeing so it's they're not hiding behind anything but what they're seeing um and then on the other side of the aisle racism i think that's a legitimate definition and then feminism is a legitimate definition but sometimes that's not what's acted upon so you can say um i'm all for equality all day long but if you're not advocating for equality you're advocating for 
um, women above men, men, women bringing down men, or whatever it is, um, I feel like that's that's conflicting. So you guys are not. You, so you will say that one dictionary definition is good enough, but you'll say this diction, dictionary definition isn't good enough. And I think definitions are really important to the conversation at hand because people are using their own definitions and what works for their argument and they're not trying to see why the other side of the aisle is looking as using that definition. So why are you using this definition? So when when my side of the aisle is using the dex dictionary definition of racism and the other side is using the sociological version uh, definition of racism, why aren't we looking over there and go, well, why are you using that definition? Why aren't you using my definition? What makes you use that definition? And I think that's somewhere that somebody could reach their hand across the aisle and try to figure out why you're using that definition. Um, I, and I, I can see that regardless if I agree with why you use that definition. I think, it, I think it's important for people to not be stuck in echo chambers and figure out why people are saying what rather than just you're dumb because that's not what I think or you're dumb because that's not the that's not the definition I use this is the definition I use um, but same thing for feminism um, why aren't oh so why are we saying so we have this issue so you have this issue with um, feminists that that people are seeing they're seeing these people who spew hatred and you're hiding behind a dictionary definition of feminism why aren't you trying to reach over and see why are you saying that i mean is it, it there's no there's no self-reflection from both sides and i think that's a huge issue that doesn't allow the conversation to go forward and what breeds more and more issues because people are in this constant, like, just cycle of just fighting with each other, just saying, no, my definition, no, my definition. And that's something I have started to see with um, being in the, or at least watching all these guys, all these videos that I watch, it becomes the same argument over and over again. And you'll see it cycle through to one person. So someone, someone, could be from a whole different YouTube channel, doesn't know anything about this other YouTube channel, but they'll say the same exact things regardless if it's left, right, or in between. So there's no variation. People are essentially stuck in echo chambers and not trying to further that conversation. That's why I think it's so important to have these conversations and to reach out to the other side. So if you don't agree with anything that I say or I've said something personally about you or even something remotely about you or an ideal that you hold close to your heart, feel free to reach out to me and let's see if I can bring you on here and we can actually have that conversation dissected a little bit and see if there is a way to bridge that gap or are we just forever on polarized sides you stay on your side and i'll stay on my side um but i think it'd be really interesting to see what could be done when people are reaching out so what i'm gonna try to do is keep reaching out to people and see if they'll come onto the show and they'll actually have these conversations with me if i can't i'll keep going on with the type of videos that i'm going on with right now just talk about a particular subject that really heats me up and hopefully i'll say something so inflammatory one time that somebody will get pissed off enough to actually talk to me so you can either reach me as far as as of right now you can reach me through comments you can either my email is on my youtube page and you can always get at me at twitter um what's that pesky uh at redder noise so r-e-d-d-e-r-n-o-i-s-e -E. i couldn't have red noise it sucks Anyways, I'll catch you guys later.